Currently, we are on the fireside chat wherein the rise of robotics, artificial intelligence, and the changing workforce landscape, wherein we're talking about AI and robotics, trends and board considerations, employees, and endangered species. We have with us our, speak, our speakers who are Professor Ahmed Atif uh, Mohammed Fodzi, who's the Director of Center for in Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, Cairo, Malaysia. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Professor Ahmed, who, who has joined us. As you know, that he's the Associate Professor, uh, Dr. Ahmed Atif Mohammed Fodzi, is the Director of Center for the Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, Cairo, which is, uh, and the University of uh, Technology, Malaysia. And we also have uh, Dr. Yong Fai, who is the co-founder director, DF Automation and Robotics, uh, Malaysia, who's joined us as well. So Dr. Yong is uh, graduated with PhD from Imperial College London. He's serving as director for his spin-off company, DF Automation and Robotics. He's also a senior lecturer in the University Techno uh, Technology, Malaysia as well. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and giving us your precious time. Over to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Vana, and uh, thank you for introdu introducing us. Um, so we have our session, uh, a very short session on the topic of the rise of robotics, artificial intelligence, and the changing workforce landscape. And uh, as introduced uh, by Vana just now, I'm Ahmad Atif, uh, the director for the center, and we have our Dr. Yong, associate professor, Dr. Yong Chi Fai, uh, which is also the member for Cairo, the center for AI and robotics, and he's the co-founder of the DF Automation and Robotics. And today we have uh, two topics that we would like to discuss together, uh, which is first on the AI and robotic uh, trends and board consideration. And secondly, we are going to move on uh, to the second topic of employees, are they the endangered species? So these are uh, some of the interesting topics that we can uh, talk together, Dr. Yong. And maybe we can start first um, on, on the trends. And as you are now involved in the spin-off company, and uh, how, do, how can you see the trends in AI and robotics? Uh, maybe uh, to you, Dr. Yong. Yeah, good morning. Thanks, uh, Bawana and uh, Dr. Ate for this session. Um, so, DF Automation, we design and manufacture automated guided vehicle for industry. I mean, we sell to MNC company, we export to a few countries. So, when MCO kicked in back in March, then there is a call from the hospital and also from frontliner because it was kind of a serious, they actually frontliner got infected, then they actually was casualty there. Uh, during the MCO, actually, to be honest, also the air automation, we couldn't do anything because it's a movement control restriction. Then we keep on thinking, can we do something about it? Can we do some stuff? So finally, we saw that, hey, why don't we send some robot to the hospital to do something that actually the, the doctor or the nurses are scared doing it or, or kind of. So then we, we talked to the hospital. Then we realized that actually, uh, number one, there are lack of a PPE for the nurses and the doctor to wear. They actually lack of actually in fact nurses and manpower to do a lot of things as simple as just to deliver the food to the hospital room. So that click us to say that hey, why don't we build a robot for that? So we modified one of our industrial robot and then we sent to a hospital in UKM uh, to send the food uh, within a short of 17 days actually. Uh, so from there actually it get a little bit of media attention. Then I, I think in Malaysia we have another big uh uh, temporary hospital in Mipes where they have about 400 beds um, and they were asking us for a robot as well and we did that as well but they only gave us three days because there will be a patient coming in. So we sent the robot there and they've been running for the last I think months and I mean months right now is already closing up because uh, I mean fortunately our number of COVID patients is reducing but for that kind of a period of a time the robot has been running like thousands of uh, meters and then they are serving breakfast, lunch and dinner so that the nurses doesn't really have to uh, do this job because they get infected possibility by the virus. Uh, so this is some of the example. Of course now we are pushing into some cleaning robot, UV disinfection robot uh, and, and hopefully next month we're going to come up with four healthcare products uh, for this industry. So again, I think this is something that actually mindset change. Uh, DF Automation has been founded for eight years, actually 2012. And our focus, all this work is only industry. We never thought of going to healthcare. And since March, because of the pandemic, because of the MCO, all of a sudden, our, our focus actually right now actually go into the healthcare. I would say that there is a 
big mindset chip at the same time also there is a big wake up call for us as well so yeah i hope that that really touched a little bit of what we are doing back to you Dr. Atif. yeah okay so uh, maybe also uh, highlight a little bit on on what cairo uh, is currently doing uh, and i think as what uh, dr yon uh, just mentioned uh, on how uh, industries like uh, df is uh, doing uh, their contribution in terms of uh, healthcare products, uh, especially in helping for the COVID situation. So um, for others who are still uh, new in knowing what Cairo is, so we are the Center for AI and Robotics. So I, I would like to share a little bit on, on the screen here. So uh, what we do is uh, we are uh, doing a little bit uh, on, on research, cons uh, consultancy and also training. And we have been uh, 22 years in uh, serving the nation as one of the center under UTM. Currently, we are going. We are focusing on on four areas, uh, which one of them are healthcare, as what Dr. Yong was mentioning. Uh, the second one is on smart manufacturing. We have agriculture and field robotics. So related to the first topic here, Dr. Yong and all the audience, we want to see how the uh, functions of AI and robotics. Uh, applied especially in Malaysia. So uh, as what Dr. Yong mentioned, I just uh, wrap up some of the work that we have done under Cairo. Under healthcare, uh, by using AI, uh, one of our researchers, uh, Dr. Ibrahim, developed uh, this AI portable temperature measurement. We can see that there are many uh, temperature systems available, but then uh, one of its kind uh, using a sensor like a Google uh, was developed by uh, this team uh, from uh, Dr. Ibrahim, uh, and part of Cairo member uh, doing face detection using AI for sure and also uh, sensing uh, data to be used as part of the uh, information storing. And uh, uh, this is the robot that was mentioned just now by Dr. Yong. Uh, Dr. Yong is also our Cairo member and also having his spin off and seeing the application of robotics in the uh, society, especially in HUKM, uh, Dr. Yong. Yeah, I think, Dr. Atif, the... I think your slide is not running. Uh, I'm still ah, seeing okay. the same slide. Okay. okay. Is it not running now? No, it's not running. Just the same slide. Okay, I think. Okay, never mind then. So, uh, so what we have uh, other than healthcare, uh, we are also uh, currently conducting research in the area of um, uh, field robotics, for example, doing a kind of inspection and uh, inspection of underwater is part of uh, how robotics can be used. But in the nature or the, the, the um, landscape of Malaysia, uh, we see that uh, more uh, work are uh, in need, especially in smart manufacturing. So Dr. Yong, how can you um, uh, see this uh, application of AI in smart manufacturing and how uh, the current work that you have in uh, DF or some of other industries in robotics in Malaysia are, are going through this? Sure. Thanks, uh, Dr. Atif. I think um, I'm a lecturer for 20 years. Then I founded this company eight years ago. To be honest, I mean, this is for Malaysia market perspective. When we sell this robot to Malaysia market, even AI, I mean, they look at the robot, they would say, hey, so cute one, what is this? So that was at that time, the evidence is not there. Uh, three years back, I think the government pushed very hard. We have this uh, Industry 5.0 forward. We have this IoT, smart manufacturing. It's become hype. Then our customer now, they come to us and look at the robot. They will ask this one question. Is this robot Industry 5.0 ready? If it yes, then they want it. So the, the mindset changed a little bit. But again, they still uh, are, are not going to adopt it because of a lot of reason. I mean, in Malaysia, we still consider has a very... Uh, low affordable, uh, low skilled worker. So they still calculate with uh, ROI compared to the value the robot can bring in. But this COVID-19 really changed a pers totally different perspective. Uh, now, I mean, since I, like I mentioned during the MCO back in March when the Prime Minister announced the MCO, immediately not only DF, they actually wanted the robot, a lot of company want robot because they cannot have their workers work in their factory. The hospital yeah. needs some time to be done. So they try to source a robot overseas from Germany, from US, from Japan, from even China. But the problem is the body is closed, they cannot do anything. Then the minister mm -hmm. said that, hey, we should, we should actually look for company in Malaysia that are doing that. Then when they try to search, they have a, I mean, they find another problem. It seems that not many robotic companies in this region. 
So I was one of the task, and I say task in the group um, led by Mosti Minister of Science and Technology, and there's a bunch of uh, university like Cairo, other university, and also robotic company like DF, Robopreneur, and, and so on. We all gathered together and we try to brainstorm. What can we actually do? So from this perspective, that's why we start doing sending some robot to hospitals, some robot to mines. So three months moving forward, uh, uh, the government see the gap, and now actually they try to encourage it to make it happening. So right now you can see a lot of this uh, so-called initiative. For example, from Mosti, from uh, this is uh, from Mosti where they have this uh, sandbox initiative, uh, about 100 million uh, allocation. If you have, uh, let's say you are the SMA, you have a technology product, but you want to try out in hospital or in a company, they give you up to 250,000 ringgit Malaysia for one site. If you want yeah. to do it at multiple sites, you get 500,000. If you have a lot more, you have this uh, 4 million, I think, funding. So there are other funding also, for example, from METI, you can get a digital transformation from 500,000 into 10 million. Then you have this uh, MTDC. So they're also kind of an initiative right now, really want to push this uh, agenda. So having said that, in Malaysia, I think maybe Dr. Ati can share more. AI, adoption AI in Malaysia still are very, very beginning. I mean, for yes. EF automation, we use AI basically for our robot per se. Because our robot is running, we do have intelligence to allow the robot running. But now we're actually working on the AI to predict the robot failure. So I think Dr. Atif can share more. On the AI's perspective in Malaysia, I think you have more clearer picture on that. Maybe you can share more on, on that. Perspective. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Yong. Um, as what Dr. Yong mentioned, I think just now we have covered two out of four of the areas uh, on healthcare as well as smart manufacturing. And uh, we can see also there are some industries which is uh, really working in the area. And uh, to answer the question of how ready the industry is, there is a study conducted by a raconteur uh, which mentioned on um, the adoption of um, IoT or, for example, the AI and robotics. Uh, not all. Um, the, the study mentioned that only 4% uh, of the industries uh, are currently uh, fully implementing uh, IR 4.0. Um, and 16% have made plan. 8% uh, have uh, business cases. Uh, and we can see a number of 22% uh, are not yet there or thinking about what IR 4.0 is. So we can see that um, these are some of the uh, readiness level. And I think under METI, they have uh, some of the assessment in terms of uh, how industry are ready towards the change. And if we are not changing, I think we are going to be left behind. And uh, that's why uh, the, the government, as what uh, Dr. Yong have mentioned, there are many initiatives have been uh, given so that industries as well as academia can work together and seeing how the nation can expand uh, towards the, the, the GDP of the country. And uh, if uh, we can see a little bit more statistic uh, related to the second topic that we are going to discuss, um, we see when people are talking about robots, people are talking about AI. I think this, the previous session uh, also uh, we're talking about how AI and robot will be replacing jobs. Um, uh, and the second topic that we have, Dr. Yong, is uh, regarding employees. Are they the endangered species? We, we, are, we, are, we heard about um, bears and some of the uh, rare tiger, right? Well, now we are talking about employees. Uh, we are now, are we being trapped because of robots or AI? So how do you comment on this? Yeah, I think that is a very, very important question. In fact, a lot of people ask this question as well. I mean, before I touch into that, just back into the trend, the trend are going for automation and AI for healthcare. Then they're also talking about agriculture and then also manufacturing and services. So these are the four trends that there are people looking into a lot of automation, robotic and AI. So back into the perspective of the employee, right? I mean, are they ready? Because a lot of jobs are being taken away. I mean, that is the big statement out there. La. I mean, yeah. we, we try to look back maybe 20 years ago when we have, when we want to uh, withdraw the money you know, from the bank, we have basically have to go into the bank, take a number, maybe wait for one and a half hour, then only we're able to take the money out. So at that time, they start to introduce this the ATM card, right? I mean, during that time, a lot of people also fight, say that, hey, you are taking the job of a counter. You are taking away a lot of people job and whatnot, right? I mean, I mean that, that was even myself also, I have been thinking, how can I trust a card to, uh, I mean, keep my money? But along the way, thing changes. I mean, now if you look at it, nobody in the bank, but actually they use a card to take the money. They allow a lot of people to withdraw and save the money even faster. 
and they actually beef up the economy a lot more. They, 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 they make the purchases much faster, they beef up the economy. But this is one side. But where this all counter gone? In fact, because of this economy transition are so high, they need a lot of people to support this system. Feedback, mm -hmm. uh, a card. Even I have told that I was, uh, I, I read somewhere that they actually use robot to do the so-called uh, RFID checking, testing, and, and they have the document so much, they need a lot of automation and people to protect, process that kind of the community. So again, mm -hmm. back into this perspective, uh, uh, let's say for manufacturing, we have 5,000 staff. Now we want to use a robot to do a simple stuff, for example, to do the delivery. But this kind of a delivery job, to be honest, is tedious. There's no value added from the personal perspective. And most mm -hmm. of the worker doesn't want this job because it's hazardous, it's repetitive, and it's boring. So if they actually use robot, they actually upscale them to maintain the robot. In fact, they get higher pay. And, and again, the job they are doing is not hazardous to them. So again, I think this is a bit of a mindset change and it will take time, definitely. Uh, yeah, sure. But I'm sure that I think we're going there. Yeah, that, that's yeah. my point. Yeah, no doubt. yeah, I would like to add some more points there. Um, there is a, st a study conducted by McKinsey and, uh, and company uh, mentioning that 50% uh, of work time in Malaysia is spent on repetitive activities, uh, which is uh, highly automatable, like what uh, Dr. Yong has mentioned. And uh, especially in processing of data, collecting data, uh, predictable, uh, physically predicting uh, some of the works on machine. Uh, these are uh, the trend, I think in 2030, we can see that most of this will be replaced. Uh, so. Uh, and how we have to upskill and also maybe reskill some of the current workers and also make our future talents ready towards these changes. Uh, because we can see that, um, yes, for sure, there, there will be some job loss. Um, but then the study also mentioned that it will be having 3.3 uh, to 6 million new jobs will be expected, uh, I mean, expected to be created by 2030. So the baseline is how... Um, we want to rise the income. We want to look for the other area, for example, for aging and also for healthcare, uh, as well as education. This is uh, one of the way how we as educator uh, um, and, and looking on how to uh, bridging the gap uh, to prepare the, the talents toward the use of, of the industry in the future. And uh, uh, we see that uh, the government now uh, especially under Penjana. Penjana uh, is uh, the, the short name for Pelan Jana Semula Ekonomi Negara. So this is a, a great initiative by the current uh, government uh, in order to um, make sure how the economy will be relieved. And Cairo as one of the centre that uh, was endorsed as the HRTF uh, Certified Centre. We are uh, a competent centre under MITI and under HRDF, we are also part of the uh, certified center uh, can play our role. I think there are a lot of other centers as well. So Penjana have been uh, putting an allocation of 250 million uh, for this kind of upskilling and reskilling. So we, won't, we don't want our engineers to be left behind. They are not going to be the endangered species. And uh, for that, we have to make sure that our talent, our engineers um, will be... Uh, up to date with the current technologies. And uh, we are in Cairo um, together with some of the uh, collaboration work with JICA have been uh, developing a special lab we call as uh, Integrated IoT Lab or we, uh, short name for uh, Intelligent Manufacturing Lab. Uh, so, uh, and we want to use um, some of this facility and share it out to the community. So we are currently uh, organizing some of the courses um, and me and Dr. Yong also are part of the uh, trainer. Uh, and we are currently uh, opening for some of the AI courses, uh, manufacturing, smart manufacturing, as well as robotic. And we see that uh, in the future, a lot of uh, collaborative robot will be used. And I think Dr. Yong also have some uh, examples of collaborative robot. Uh, maybe Dr. Yong, can you touch a bit on, on how collaborative robot will be used and why it is important in in the uh, manufacturing line. Yeah, I think just a quick, because I'll be in industry, uh, most of the, I mean, operator or person where we see a robot, we kind of like, I mean, scared because we thought the robot going to hit you, going to injure you and whatnot. But moving forward, the robot going to be designed to be, uh, I mean, collaborative, they work together with you, they look uh, nicer, software and whatnot. I mean, there is a new technology on that perspective. 
uh, I think that that also allow us to perceive and and again uh, adopt robotic in our life because you won't you can't imagine at this moment you have a robot at your personal home, but I can personally think that for the next five and ten years we're going to have that uh, whether we like it or not. I was asked during the MCO actually I was asked to design a robot to actually uh, fry rice. Uh, because they cannot go out and buy you know fries and all this uh, food they say can you design something that actually like a chef do certain things and so on so yeah i think that will be the future about the collaborative uh, robot how the robot going to mingle around with us yeah so i think based on the input from industry it is also important for us to uh, see how this kind of demand can be supported by uh, us as one of the trainer um, and maybe we have a very short time, uh, Dr. Yong. So uh, if you can uh, conclude a little bit on the two topics that we have discussed. Huh? One is on the trend of AI and robotics. We have touched a little bit on healthcare, smart manufacturing, uh, and we have also other field. And uh, the second topic is on the employees. Are they the endangered species? Any, any, any final uh, say from you, Dr. Yong? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when MCO struck us, to be honest, personally, I also felt that it was like, well, end of the world, I mean, to be honest. <laughs> but moving forward after a couple of months, then I personally, I tried to be positive, optimistic, and I see there's a great opportunity everywhere. Uh, I also have come around with some accountants, some even chemical engineers. So they start to come up and say, that, hey, I want to learn AI. And I will say, that, oh, okay, are you going to take another degree at one month? They say, no, I just learned it in one month. I just took this Coursera courses. I just took this from everything online. They already beefed up with this kind of technology information. And to be honest, sometimes those that are very specialized, for example, I just say computer science, uh, 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 try to learn AI. But you are in a different field. For example, you are in chemical, you are in engineering, try to learn AI. Sometimes the value that you learn is even faster because you have a different skill on this perspective. So one of my key message really to everyone here um, is really try to learn how to learn fast uh, and, and try to embrace the new normal. Why I'm saying this, try to learn in the new fast. In the past, when we say learning, we have to go to university, we have to... Uh, I mean, we have to went through maybe a couple of years to get certain certification. Uh, then moving forward, it's about how do you have a computer, how fast computer you have that you can become a programmer. But yeah. nowadays, it's not about affordability to have a computer. Everyone has a computer. Everyone has an internet. Mm -hmm. All internet is fast. The information is only in the internet. I mean, the, the question is, how fast can you learn a new knowledge? I would say that would be my last message. Not that it. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, we have a very short time, and uh, from me, I think if I would like to also um, take some of the points highlighted by Dr. Yong on how uh, learning is very important, and uh, we as as the center of uh, AI and robotics in Malaysia under UTM, uh, because people have been uh, mixed up. What is Cairo? Yeah? Cairo is uh, is it in Egypt and so on? So we are the center of AI and robotics, uh, UTM. And uh, currently, uh, under the university, we are looking forward for a very close collaboration with industry, uh, also in, from, from, from the government agencies, and also to be part with the society needs. So we call this as quadruple helix. And in UTM, we have a, a consortium or a platform we call as AIM 4 Star. So for industries out there, and uh, any uh, people who are interested in, in uh, working and collaborating, we are op we, with open, ha open hands, we would like to uh, collaborate with you guys. And uh, we see that the opportunities are, are there to uh, playing our role together. So Cairo can play uh, our roles uh, to provide some of the demand side uh, to enhance the capability of the existing workforce, as well as to ensure the availability of future talent. So we have the academics uh, other than from UTM uh, to help as well. And my final word is uh, with the pandemic, uh, it is a situation that we cannot control uh, what is happening. So therefore, we have to challenge ourselves how to control in the way uh, that we are going to respond of the things happening here because that is where we have the power. So I think uh, with that, I would like to transfer the session to you, Vana. Thank you very much, Dr. Yong, for the session. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, just before you leave, well, there are a couple of questions from the audience. Would that be okay if I can take them live? We still have a few minutes on us. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. sure.
Okay, perfect. So first up, uh, Kat Yong asked that, uh, can the professor, professor share again about the McKinsey statistic that jobs in Malaysia are highly repetitive? How many percent is this and what and for what time period? Could you please take on that first? Okay, um, I, I was mentioning about this just now. So uh, based on the study, uh, it is mentioned that um, I think that the, the studies are already published. Okay. Uh, the highly highly repetitive work that was mentioned of uh, more than fifty percent is uh, mainly on the uh, based on the study that was conducted in two thousand sixteen. So thirteen percent was done in processing data, eighteen uh, percent in collecting data. For example, in legal support work, mortgage or originators, nineteen percent in uh, people physical, and these are some of the highly repetitive work that can be automatable. So we have. A, a system now called as RPA, uh, so it can be used uh, to expedite the process, like what Dr. Yong mentioned uh, just now. Uh, now, how ATM have been changing the landscape of banking. Uh, so, some of the documentation um, things can also be uh, replaced. Uh, this is not only talking about how robot works, but this is on how AI system can also be replacing. And the function of some of the visualization to data analytics, big data, uh, for example, we have some um, application using Tableau. Uh, so this is uh, tools that can be used, I think, in the industry. I think okay. that to answer the, the question. One more question, just one more. Uh, it's, uh, Isudin is asking, what is Cairo's main focus on knowledge transfer initiatives to students and community? Would any okay, Dr. Young, maybe you can start on that one. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I mean, Cairo is founded because as a university, we have a responsibility to translate the AI and also value back to the community. But of course, for first instance, we back to the student because this is where we are the, come the closest one. And the next one will be the industry. So what Cairo did, not only just for research, I mean, each of us doing a very different research. For example, myself, I'm doing robotics, uh, embedded system, uh, medical devices. For Dr. Arthur, do soft robotics. So we have some other stuff they're doing, focusing on machine vision, drone, and whatnot. So we are divers of a different vertical of knowledge. Uh, uh, and, and moving forward also, we encourage a lot of a collaboration with industry. And I think that is very important because ultimately, whatever we do, whatever research we've done, they're actually funded by government taxpayer money. We need to make sure that it actually instill back to the economy of our country. So we yeah, collaborate okay. with, uh, I think Dr. Atim may know, some of them is like you. I'm not sure we are. MW. Okay, I think you, we can mention, yeah. So, I mean, Dr. Ati, you can mention the company name. <laughs> so, we, yeah. we work a lot with uh, industry. I think that, that's the important dilemma because university and re, uh, university industry should work together because the problems stem mostly are from industry and the university, we can do a lot of research. But in the past, this is a very tough uh, collaboration. Well, I would say that COVID-19, we really hope that this can really push uh, this collaboration faster and more effective. Yeah, I do agree with what Dr. Yong mentioned. Uh, so in, in playing in the role uh, as the bridge uh, to reduce the gap between uh, industry and academia. So we have uh, this platform uh, to be together and uh, share some of the knowledge that we have. Uh, and we, we are looking forward uh, for any uh, possible collaboration in the future. So I think later on, you can just Google Cairo UTM. And we are ready to, uh, not Cairo, Egypt, yeah, so sorry. So Cairo, UPM, then, then uh, you can get our contact there. Thank you so much uh, for being so kind. And it was an incredible fireside chat. So once again, a big thank you.